Bob, we've talked a couple weeks now about kind of the passing game and, and, and where it's developed. And just, you know, just from watching the game, it just looked like Chad was was more in control of the offense and, and more confident with his throws. Did you see anything in film afterwards, or, or what did you see in the game that maybe gave you a feel like this is the Chad we expected? Yeah, not only was he making terrific throws, even when there was pressure in his face, the throws were so on the money, we had run after the catch. And, and you know, we ask a lot of our, our players, but our quarterbacks in particular, if we're going to run 90 plays like we did on Saturday, they have to make 90 split-second decisions. And the games when he or John or Quinn or Connor, and you keep going back, you know, since we've been here, where they make some mistakes on those decisions, it makes us, it makes the, the road to victory so much more difficult. And the games where they play like that, it's almost, we are so good offensively. And um, that was really good to see him play and execute, and the guys around him do so well. You know, do well. You know, in terms of how we play to play, executed. Yeah, you know, your first year here, you had the monster season by Trey Peacock, and we've seen you know great all Ivy years by Roman Wilson, and and you know, in stretches when he was healthy, Seth the Valve. This year, it's really been just kind of whoever's open. I mean, ten guys. You know, 12 guys have caught a pass, 10 guys uh, against Columbia. Are you pretty comfortable with that style of approach to your pass game? Or would you like to see somebody maybe step up as a, as a little bit more of a, a dependable kind of a go-to option? Yeah, they've all been dependable, and, that, and that's the great thing about it. That, you know, Scott Carpenter, there just weren't a lot of opportunities early in, in the year. And then Saturday, there were. And there's going to be times when Isaiah Barnes, who is going to be a dominant receiver in, in a game. The same thing with Frashani and Osborne and Jesper and John Lovett and the number of guys were getting the football. They'll continue to do that. And but but no, I you know we don't go into game saying we just got to feed this guy 11 times and if we don't get him eight completions, we're going to lose. We just feel confident that if they're going to double Isaiah Barnes. There's other guys that we'll go to, and then eventually, as they have success, Isaiah will get singled up, and he'll get more opportunities. I know I, I've been guilty of, of when we talk about this defensive line doing the Haluba and Desiree, and Desiree and Haluba, and you're always the first one to bring up Schlossberg. You know, the, the improvements he made from last year to this year, all he did last year, you know, what— but I think we really saw it against Columbia. I mean, he leads your defensive lineman now in tackles and sacks and tackles for loss. But he was really kind of, it looked like the leader of that front that really shut Columbia down for, for basically those final 45 minutes. I mean, what is it about his game and that, that has made him such a really a breakout player over the last 12 months? Well, he's continued to get stronger. And he came here and he had some development that he needed. And, and to Henry's credit, he has worked incredibly hard in the weight room. And he's just honed in on his technique and he's always played hard. But these other areas of his game that he had to develop. And we got young guys right now, when I watch, you know, the Matt Hampsons and Jay Rollators that are following his footsteps and eventually going to be the same type players, that, that's just great leadership. And, you know, it's not to take away from Kurt and Ty. I just want to make sure that we don't forget about Henry and don't forget about Brandon and some other guys. Could you sense that the confidence of that defense growing, especially after, you know, what was a tough Lehigh game, growing as that game went on? Because they look like every time they got on the field, they were just starting to swarm a little bit faster, a little bit harder, and, and, and you know, really didn't let Columbia breathe those last three quarters. Yeah, no, we got to continue to do that. We got to continue. And, you know, the first drive, we have another third and 18. And, you know, I'm going to be fully gray if we can't get that fixed. You, you know, we have to do a better job in some certain situational football. We have a bust, big play, leads to a touchdown. But the look on our guys when they came back, it wasn't, oh, here we go again. It, it was one of those looks. I went over there and was like, you know, just keep doing what, be exact, do your responsibilities, do your job. And they had a great look to them. And we came out right after that. And I, I thought other than one or two plays executed exactly what was called. And, and, and that's, you know, the credit of the players. One more road game on this three game trip, final non-league game of the season, a really good, you know, a good opportunity to kind of build on Columbia, you know, and take that into the Ivy season. A Georgetown team that certainly doesn't look anything like the team you faced 
three years ago, three and one on the season, and forcing a lot of turnovers. I mean, what's been, how have they been so strong in the, in the turnover column? They swarm the ball. They run to the football. They get really good pressure. It hasn't shown up in the sack column, but in the disruption column, they are all over the field. Their backers, their secondary, their D line are just really good athletes. They play hard. They're well coached, and they're all over the field. And they forced 11 turnovers in in four games. And, and you know, sometimes you walk down the hallway, and people who don't watch video are like, "Oh, this is you know, you're going to do this." And we watch the video, and we know if a different call is made on a fumble touchdown for Georgetown. That game's probably going down through the last drive. That's how good they are. And obviously they found ways to win their first three games and win those games relatively convincingly. Offensively, seem like a fairly balanced group. I mean, they're going to kind of challenge you either, you know, they look like they want to run the ball, but if necessary, if necessary, they can throw it around. Yeah, they do a great job using the width of the field. Mm-hmm. They will use the entire width, both in the run game and in the pass game, and that opens up the vertical game for them. They had two huge, long plays uh, versus Harvard, and it wasn't like they were being caught. They, their guys were pulling away you know, in the open field. So there's team speed. They do a really good job up front. And schematically, they're going to really force the perimeter as a big th- – it's a really good weapon for them. And the way you're either stopping the run, and if you're stopping the run, they're getting the ball outside and forcing guys to make tackles in space. 